Hey Man Cave, this is Bob from the Bob's Unscale Man Cave, and this is part two of how to build the Helix Mountain. This is one of those things that is uh, not for the faint of heart, uh, but if you're willing to try, go ahead and make your own if you want. Uh, I'm just trying to cover up my Helix so that it doesn't really look so constructive, like it's just a bunch of wood in the corner of my room. I want to make it look a little bit more presentable and make it kind of look like a mountainside. So, got the roads in there, got the foam on there, I got some more uh, mountainside foam that I've been carving and kind of making it look like rocks and getting some sort of shape. And then I'm going to show you how I'm putting on some shaper sheet from Woodland Scenics and making that fit. I've got this plan in mind, and it doesn't always seem to work out, but I'm, I'm trying to get to that particular design that I have. And it's going to take a little bit of uh, finesse and uh, some creative maneuvering and carving and stuff like that to get it all to fit right, especially with the door that opens. So uh, there's a lot of different things I'm going to be putting on this Helix Mountain. And that is you know, the foam, the shaper sheet, the ready rocks, maybe even some plaster rocks that I'm going to mold. I'm also going to try and put on uh, some trees and some road bed for uh, the vehicles I'm going to put on there. I have a couple of vehicles that I can put on there and uh, it should look pretty nice. And so. I'm going to try the best I can and make sure everything works out. I'm even going to probably try and put in a bridge in front of a waterfall. So I've got quite a lot of things that I have planned for this series. Uh, so we're doing the shaper sheet and uh, just trying to get it all prepared. So let's go take a look. So I'm doing a little test with a piece of shaper sheet. Uh, some of this white styrofoam ramps from uh, Woodland Scenics and some of this uh, Gorilla Glue again. Uh, I'm going to check and see if the, the glue dries to the metal foil on the back here to this foam. So put a little weight on it and see what happens. Give it oh, oh, 20 minutes or so, half an hour to uh, kind of dry up a little bit. In the meantime, while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to take a piece of shaper sheet and kind of see how it's going to look over the edge of my roadway and cliffs. This will be the top of the roadway, of course, and hanging down here. So i got to kind of cover up some of this area here and cover up all these little cracks. I figured shaper sheet's uh, pretty easy. I can make it look like rocks as well and uh, other little things sticking out and so forth that I can uh, put trees on or, or something else. See what it's going to look like. I'm going to thinking about putting the top of the shaper sheet as part of the roadway so I can uh, model the roadway, put some dirt on here or tar or something on top. Um, I could do it a number, number of different ways. I could put some uh, thin construction uh, paper up here on the top some black stuff or brown, uh, kind of make it cover up the whole roadway and then kind of model over the top of that. Uh, that's one way I could try it. But I, I got some shaper sheet. Well, that is hard to say, you know? Shaper sheet. And I'm going to try that. I don't want to really conform to this shape here. I kind of want to make it uh, its own shape. So I'm going to make it a little bit farther out, crumple it up a little bit, here and there, there I got some sort of shape right there, uh, it doesn't quite conform to this, so it's, it's kind of off the top of that uh, foam and it eventually we'll start looking a little bit better. I can paste other uh, ready rocks on here and uh, 
all sorts of different things I can put on there. So I'm going to keep on uh, putting some shaper sheet on here and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, I've got uh, all my pieces on there. I hope they're going to be uh, where I want to put them. They're just loosely sat there right now because I still have some uh, decoration, basically some uh, painting on the pink foam. Or I may actually put some plaster on it to uh, kind of fill in all the little cracks and some putty or something like that to uh, make it look a little bit more uniform and so it doesn't look like it's got all these uh, strata lines going vertical. Uh, that's probably not what I really want. But it's kind of how it works out. Yeah, I probably could put the, the foam this way and cut a lot of pieces like that and done it that way. Um, you know, second thought, and you know, it's hindsight, but um, that probably would be. Well, apparently somebody likes to burn rubber right outside my door. Well, the, the test is working pretty good. It's uh, it's holding on there. It's not perfect, so don't lift up on it. Uh, you may want to put some pins in here, some push pins with a good head on it, maybe little round ones or something to hold it in place, or like glues or just just to be sure. But um, this has only been drying for about an hour, and uh, it will cure in about 24 hours. So. I'll definitely check back on this test later uh, tomorrow. But for now, okay, what you want to do is you want to take your razor knife, and I've got uh, some of these kind of razor knives, you know, slide way out here like this. Pick these up at Harbor Freight for 99 cents, and so they, they work pretty good, and nice and long, and you can Cut out your chunks however you want to in your form, in your foam. And from there, you get a rough shape of what you're going to actually have in there. Now, you can keep this as rough as you want right here, depending on the scale that you have. Uh, the bigger the scale, the more pronounced uh, rocks you want to have, and because they're going to be bigger in size, obviously. So the smaller you get in scale, it's going to want to look far off in the distance, uh, more so than it would in O scale, for instance, or HO. So you got to keep that perspective in mind as much as possible when you're doing your carving. Now, with mine being N scale, I got to make little tiny uh, markings in the rock, and so it doesn't jump out too much as huge rocks, but you know what I mean. It's going to look pretty good. Um, I've got all the pieces glued down and I carved out some uh, rough kind of rock looking uh, shapes over here. This side over here is going to be up against a wall so you're not even going to see this part right here. You're going to see down here toward the bottom uh, but not the whole uh, end. Uh, the, the shades are right going to be along right alongside this area here. So, uh, what I want to do is, from the perspective over on that side, uh, get a viewing angle as it looks what I want it to look like. You know, so people see what I really want them to see. They don't have to see the back side. I don't have to carve this back side at all. So, uh, <coughs> take. Take one of your dull knives, I guess, one of the older ones, and you just make a uh, just a small little blade in there. So you want to go across, and make some strata lines like this. You can make them straight across if you want, but I'm going to go angled because my foam is actually vertical, and that kind of gives a, kind of a really defined line, but I want to try and merge these lines together as much as possible. And I'll do that by hiding the lines with you know, foliage and uh, paint and so forth, or carving in something that looks like it's supposed to be like that. So I'm going to make some strata lines.
You don't have to be too deep, just, just enough to uh, make something in there that has something profoundly defined as, a, as sort of a line. Then I take and make it a lot shorter, lock it in place, and just start scratching. And that just breaks up the pieces into smaller chunks and get some high and low areas of your rock. And doesn't make it look like it was just carved straight and flush. Okay, I kind of want to have it lower over here and a little bit higher on this side because that's where people are going to view and they're going to see that edge there. So. I kind of want to get this merged in. And it kind of looks like you got a lot of loose rock that's broken off in pieces. And once you're done scratching it up and making it really bumpy and stuff, just run through and make more lines in the same direction that you uh, had made your strata lines before. That way when the paint gets in there, it doesn't get in all the places, but it will see that line a little bit better. And you can kind of see you have got some strata lines in here and that's going to look uh, pretty good. As you can see it looks uh, pretty good. You can just start picking out some of the really loose pieces there and pop out uh, whatever doesn't quite look right, doesn't look broken. You can also make like shelves and uh, places for uh, a large chunk had fallen off or something, or um, a number of different carving things you can put into this uh, styrofoam to make it look more realistic. So I'm going to keep uh, doing this kind of uh, carving and we'll get back with you. And we'll get back to uh, doing some painting. Once you have your foam down and you've done a lot of your carving and everything else, you're getting ready to start put some paint on there and probably even some uh, ground foam and foliage and other trees and whatever else you're going to put on there, some rocks maybe. Uh, this next step, you've got to prepare the walls that I'm not going to be putting any shaper sheet on. The shaper sheet will go on this area here, and all the pink foam over on the sides are going to have uh, some paint. And what I'm going to use is I'm going to start off using some Black's Cover Max Krylon black paint. Then I'll go over it with some pumpkin orange. And probably follow it up with a little bit of uh, metallic gray paint. Any kind of gray paint is uh, good. As long as it's not gloss. You don't want gloss. More of a flat paint. Uh, in some areas you can also try using this red oxide, depending on the kind of rocks you're trying to get a color for. And so it's just there to give some definition to all the bumps and shadows and so forth that are in the rock. Uh, face that I've carved out. So let's get started.
Well, that was probably a little bit too much silver. Uh, I used the wrong kind. It's aluminum, brilliant. And I didn't want that. I want just a regular kind of a silver. Or, uh, you know, something like that. But it's easy. Just kind of a. Uh, Kind of do it over a little bit until you get the right shading. And it just kind of sparkles now like it's uh, huh, like it's uh, got all sorts of minerals in it or something. Now to keep on going. There you go. I'm basically out of the black, and I did really a, a really long spray of the silver, so I wouldn't get so much bunched up in the same spot. So it kind of looks pretty good, and just got to put some more uh, uh, touch-up pieces here because the paint will kind of uh, shrink the foam and expose more pink. So I'm gonna, got to put a lot of uh, little pieces of grass in there and cover things up. So uh, let this dry and we'll move on to the next part. I also just went and added some of this Krylon Make It Stone that I had left over. Kind of looks sort of like that if you cover it completely. And I just put a little splattering all over uh, parts of it. Add a little bit more um, speckles to it. Doesn't really stand out too much, but that's okay. It uh, gives some sort of definition of kind of a rock, I guess. Looks good though. Well, there you go, man, Cavians. That's been part two of how to build a Helix Mountain, or how I'm doing it anyway. And uh, this episode, we pretty much showed how to apply the foam onto the cardboard and get everything kind of situated and shaped the way you want it to by cutting slits in there and making some strata uh, looking kind of rock and getting some lines in there trying to get some sort of realism to the mountain uh, shape that it is. And uh, it's not really the perfect mountain but you know it's an imaginary mountain and uh, it's just the first couple steps of getting this whole thing done. So uh, I also painted this and showed you how I made it kind of uh, look a bunch of different colors, the black, the orange, the silver, and even the rock kind of speckling that I put on there. So take my technique, you know, experiment with uh, different colors on your own. There's a bunch of different colors you can use. Uh, try and get something close to nature kind of look. So uh, till next time guys, happy mile railroading and stay off the tracks. Bye. So if you like what you saw here today, go ahead and click subscribe down here below or follow my Facebook, Google+, Twitter, and my Instagram links down here below in the comments. Also, click on one of my other links for videos as well. As always, Mancavians, happy model railroading. Stay off the tracks.